Hi, welcome to Nanny's Country Treasures. I'm Joanna if you're new here and I'm glad you're here. On this channel I love to do affordable DIYs and home decor. I also love to sew. I hope you'll consider subscribing and becoming part of my YouTube family. You can ring that bell to be notified when I upload a video and you won't miss any content. Please know that all your likes and comments keep me in the YouTube algorithm and helps my channel to grow. Thank you for your support. Now let's get crafty. Okay, so let's get started. You're going to need dowel rods. Um, I have, I'm almost positive it's 3 sixteenths. Um, I got it at either Walmart or Hobby Lobby. They do have dowel rods at the Dollar Tree, but they are just a slight bit bigger. And if you use them, that's fine, but you'll have to make your hole in your um, racetracks bigger. You're going to need the racetrack piece. There's two pieces, okay? Two kinds. You need the connector pieces. There is a start piece, which has a ramp thing on it, but you need the connectors because it have holes in both ends, and there's nothing attached to them, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to want to take your racetrack and start it on your dowel rod. Um, you want to put it up the dowel rod some so you can get all your tracks on. And you're just going to alternate tracks. One side, other side. Then go back one side and keep going till you're done. Now it'll be a little thick and you can make it thinner if you shave the sides of your track down but I didn't care to. It didn't bother me. I'm going to cover both ends up anyway. So this is just the way I I done mine, um, but if you want to trim yours a little bit, go ahead. It just wasn't worth my time because, like I said, I'm covering it up. So you just go back and forth until you get them all on there, and you have a piece left on the end to stick down in your base to hold it up. And then what we're going to do is I, I broke my first rod. You'll have to be careful with these. They're very thin. But you just go up. And then go to the other side and grab the other one and you're just alternating these as well to get them on um, it doesn't it, it really matter where they go right now you can fix them later now that they're all on I'm gonna take this um, round ball and it fits right on this dowel rod I got it at Hobby Lobby or Walmart and that's gonna be the top of my pumpkin um, because if you put it on the bottom, then you have a whirly bird that looks like it goes on your house. But anyways, um, this is a coaster. Oh, no, these are my three six. This is my bit. It was a three sixteenths bit, drill bit. And I took my drill and I drilled a hole um, in that. That's coasters from Walmart. They come four in a pack and they're two ninety eight and they're pretty thick. So I was able to drill a good size hole in there and then I pushed down too hard. You don't want to push down. I forgot I had soft stuff under there. Your stick needs to go flush. So I got a hammer and hammered it back down. But anyways, this is what we got right here. And I'm spacing them out where I want them. And I'm just going to take my Gorilla Glue and my Fine Tip Hot Glue Gun. And I'm just going to secure all around these tracks to make sure they don't move. Okay, now I'm going to take, this is an easy bow maker type deal that I made, um, but anyway, it just helps me. So, I got my ribbons at the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to open them. Now, I'm going to take my first ribbon, which is wide ribbon, and y'all, really, Dollar Tree. Now, I'm scared of this ribbon. Look at that. Ugh. Oh, breaks my heart. Anyways. This really breaks my heart. Look at this crap. The, oh my goodness. I can't even. You know what? I am going to. You can't get that side back on. So y'all. I'm going to rip it off. And I'm going to go with it. Just because I like it. And I want it on here. And I'm hoping that it gets hidden. And it really doesn't matter. But anyway. Here we go. This stuff. Oh, okay. Get rid of that. All right. Now, what I want to do is put my ribbon in here, and I want tails on this bow, but you do not need your tails this long. 
Um, I, if you don't put anything inside your pumpkin, that's fine. But I ended up changing my mind on my pumpkin. I was going to paint it, and I didn't even paint it. Um, it's been raining and storming, so I didn't do that. But anyway, you really need your tails, if you're going to put something in it, five inches. Okay, about five inches. I cut these about ten and a half inches. But anyways, you just take your ribbon, and once you got your tail out, loop it over, twist, so you get your print side back up where it belongs. And my board is about six and a half on the edges. So that's where I put my first loop. And then I'm going to pull my tail down and cut it off. And like I said, I ended up cutting all my tails off. So you really don't need these long. Cut them at five inches if you're going to put anything in your pumpkin. But anyhow, I'm just going to cut these off. And then I am going to dovetail my ends while I have the ribbon there. So I don't have to worry about going back and, and doing it later. So I just get that on there. And now I'm taking my second ribbon. And I want the plaid in between the two prints, if that makes any sense. I just think it would look better that way. Not that when I fluff the bow, it makes any difference. It's just in my brain, it has to go this way. You have to have some kind of order in your life, don't you? I mean, you should anyway. Okay, I'm making this loop a half an inch shorter than the big loop. I'm just doing it in the same manner. Put it in, make my loops, twist, and then there's my tail. I'm going to dovetail the ends of this. At least I think I am. I don't know. I just grabbed this other ribbon for some reason. Maybe I forgot. I don't know. Nope. Here I go. I'm going to dovetail my ends. <laughs> uh. Okay, to dovetail, you just pinch your ribbon in half and then cut a um, from one end to the other. Make sure you cut it the right way because I have messed them up before. I, I'm pretty sure I do in this video. Um... This is going to be going the same way. On. Loop. Make sure you twist when you're in that. Um, between those dowel rods. I might. I might. I'm going to make another. Um, bow. Helper. So I might video me. Might as well video me doing that. And show you how to make one. They're, they're super easy. Um. This one's just too wide, I think. I'm not sure. But anyways, dovetail your ends. Y'all watch. I think this is where I messed it up. Yes, I did. I just saw myself do it. Look at that. I'm so silly. Okay, so I have to do it the other way. <laughs> now I got it right. Oh my goodness. Okay, I was going to take this off at this point. And just make another bow but I'm just gonna turn my bow maker around and I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I done before to make my bow except this one is not big enough to make tails this is where in the end of it you'll see me I just cut off those pumpkin tails because there wasn't enough when I was going around this thing so anyways I just do everything all over again Okay, this is my last one, and I'm pulling it all up and holding it tight so it doesn't come apart. And I'm going to take my little zip tie. I buy these at Walmart because they're actually cheaper at Walmart. They're in the tool section, and they're like $0.94, cents, $0.98, cents, dollar. I don't know. They're cheaper than anywhere else. And then I don't tighten it all the way tight. I want to take my pipe cleaner and run a pipe cleaner under the zip tie. The reason I use a zip tie and not do it all with a pipe cleaner is just because I think it gets tighter with a zip tie and it's easier for me. So that's the way I do it. I'm not going to fluff this because it makes no sense to do so until I get it on my pumpkin. Um, I did not use my pit berries on this just because I didn't know where to put them. So here is my base and that little ball is going to be a problem. I'll just tell you. So, but anyway, it's not a big problem. 
my bow covers it. So I'm just going to put it on there. And then I'm going to take my pipe cleaner and go under the pumpkin and secure it under the pumpkin. I was going to run it between the tracks, but it just, it wasn't, it wasn't like I couldn't cover up my ball at all or the ball on the top of the pumpkin at all. So I ended up going under it right there. And I'm gonna take some glue and tack that down to the ball. And then I'm going to tighten my pipe cleaner down there. My bow came off of the pipe cleaner, I mean the ball, because I didn't hold it. But anyways, I get it on there. Now I'm starting to fluff my bow. And what you're gonna wanna do is just pull all your loops up and sort them out and twist them to however you like them and it looks good to you. We're just gonna twist and pull and twist and pull until it looks um, even too. We want it, the loops to look even and distributed evenly. Okay, it is bare right here. So I cut the pumpkin. Um, this is one I had earlier and I just cut it off. I cut my pumpkins off so I could have plaid, print, plaid, print, all the way around. See, so I just cut all the pumpkin ones off because there wasn't enough. So I'm going to scrunch up the end and I'm going to put a little zip tie on there and zip tie it real tight and then snip my zip snip my zip I'm gonna snip my zip tie almost messed up and then I'm just gonna glue it and tuck it right under there I'm gonna put a good amount of glue on there to get it to stick um, I'm not just gonna glue it to the plastic though in case it pops off I'm gonna glue it to the uh, ribbon that I have up there I'm gonna smush that back down on it and uh, right there and then you know just get that right where I need it to fill in that gap that I had and that makes me happy okay right here I've got these leaves they were orange I got them at the Dollar Tree they're burlap leaves and I didn't want orange on orange so I painted them with just white acrylic paint and I actually had a <laughs> I was showing you how I pounced the pounced the paint on there with a um, little chip brush looking thing from the Dollar Tree. They're purple and green and yellow and orange and all that. They come three to a pack. Um, so anyways, I just pounced paint on them and changed them white. Now I'm just gonna tuck them and glue them. And y'all, I had a mess with this glue gun. I had glue going everywhere. I don't even know what the world I was doing with this mess. You'll see it blopping. I blopped it all over my blue thing I was like oh my god I'm real picky about my blue mats they are expensive and they're very handy when I'm sewing and that's what I use them for and me getting crap all over them does not make me happy y'all I'm telling you but it picked off so we're good um anyway so I just used three of these I don't know I think things look better in three sometimes so I just put three leaves on there now my foam won't go in there because of that stick so I tried to cut it and it broke it broke in half so I have um, two pieces here and I'm just gonna glue to the bottom and then glue on the edge to stick it to the bottom and then I'm gonna stick the other piece in there real quick and just put glue on the bottom and shove those two together to hold them together and put them on the bottom that's what I'm going to be sticking my florals in. See all my glue? I don't even know where that big glue blob came from at all. Um, I'm going to take this floral moss. I usually get it at Dollar Tree if I can find it. If not, Walmart or anywhere. Hobby Lobby, they have it. Um, but anyway, I hate this stuff. It gets everywhere. It's so stinking messy. But it, it helps cover up a lot, of, a lot of things. So I'm just going to glue that down on that styrofoam or floral foam. You can see it down there all tucked in glued on um, just to hide my floral foam so you know yeah it looks like a big green bird nest in there but anyway 
I've got lamb's ear, and I'm going to put my lamb's ear first. I get this at Walmart. They used to come one, um, but now it's two tied together um, for like 98 cents or a dollar or something like that. So, anyways, I just, I cut my wires. I couldn't find my wire cutters. I cut my floral stem wire. I want them kind of long because I want them to stick out. And I'm just going to poke. I think I used three because I like my threes. And I'm just sticking them in randomly and, you know, I don't know. Anyways, there's no rhyme or reason why I do things sometimes. I just do it. But anyhow, now I'm going to take one of these leaf um, bushes, branches, whatever, from the Dollar Tree that I got in the fall. And these were so pretty. I got them for flower arrangements in my kitchen and in my living room. But, you know, I had to put them in this pumpkin. I saw these racetracks and I was just like, oh my God, a pumpkin. Like, this would be so cute as a pumpkin. So I started this yesterday or the day before and it's been just raining. And I was going to spray paint it like I might have said before, but because I didn't really like the shiny orange, but it's been raining and it's so damp outside. I just said, forget it. I'm just going to leave it shiny. I was going to put it on my porch anyway. So I just left it as is. But anyways, you're going to see me just randomly, um, putting flower stems in here just to cover up all that floral. The, I mean, all that, yeah, floral foam. I only had two of these. And I thought I bought a bunch of them, but if I did, do y'all see that? A trick to get the tags off sometimes. If it's on a stem that can be pulled off, you just pull the stem off, slide the tag up, and then put your, pop your flower or whatever back down. And I'm just putting these in opposite sides, and then I have three of these or four of these. I'm putting the greenery in there too. The greenery, when you put your leaves in, it helps fill, um... The greenery is for a filler. It works wonders. But um, I'm just going to place these. Uh, I don't know what they are. They have burlap in them. So they, you know, burlap, screaming, fall, and country. So I stuck them in there. Um, they come out in the fall. So I figure they're fall flowers. But anyway, see how my ribbon is hanging down and it is covering up my flowers. Well, I have to remedy that and cut it shorter later. So, just so you know, that's why I said don't cut it the full 10. Cut it 5. And that way you ain't got to fool with it and waste your ribbon when you get it on here. Now I'm going to stick these pomegranate, berry, pomegranate berries in there. And uh, I leave the stems kind of long. Some stems I cut short, but most of them I keep kind of long to so, you know, so they stick close to or out of the um, racetrack edge. And I'm just, you know, just adding whatever as filler. Okay, here is where I am going to take and cut my... Um, ribbon shorter because I can't see the flowers and the ribbon ain't really curling down in there. Now, if I wasn't going to put flowers in there, I would have left the ribbon. Um, you have that option, but I just, I thought it would be cute to add flowers in there. So that's what I did. I had them and I just, I wanted to fill the inside because it looked empty. Now I'm just going to take this wheat and I'm going to cut the stems off the wheat and I'm going to put the wheat in there and I want it sticking out from the, um, I was going to say pumpkin tracks, but you know what I mean? The pumpkin sides, they are now not race tracks. They are pumpkin tracks. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, I'm just cutting all these off and you know, it's easier to put your flowers in as individual pieces as opposed to putting them all in one. Sometimes I do leave them whole and I just sprawl them out and spread them out and then spread other flowers out and intermingle them in. Um, I do that a lot when I do vases or, you know, you know, things like that. And 
that's because I, if I want to change them, I can pull them out and, you know, your flowers are not touched. They're just ready to re re-put somewhere else or redo. Re-put. Is that even a word? I don't even know, but it is now re-put. You re-put that there. Um, now I got my little cattails that I love so much and I'm going to put these in there somewhere. And I'm just going to put flowers and poke flowers in that I have. These are just random flowers until I get it full like I want it. And um, then I'll let you see the finished product. I do want to show you that I use these greenery, you know, that, that the flowers came off of. And I had um, used previous flowers. I save everything, y'all. It's, it's a bad habit. But when you're a crafter, you just tend to do that because you never know when you're going to use it. So, I pull these up because, and I cut them short. I want them short because the inside, you know, not where the flowers are on the outside, but the inside looks a little um, bare, and you can really see my um, block in there. So, I am going to place these greenery um, in there to cover up that floral foam. Look, this is beautiful. I am in love. You'll see a picture at the end of this video, but I took some onion grass, went outside, and spray painted it brown, and uh, it didn't really want to stick because it's so wet outside, but anyways, it makes it look more real, like they're dying but not dead kind of thing, but anyway, there it is. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. You are a blessing.